Before creating an email form, it's often a good idea to sit down and work out exactly what you're going to extract from the field. Look at different kinds of input fields. Each offers a different opportunity later on. You might look for newsletter subscriptions, you might want to summarize data in a specific report, or you might want to use a radio select in order to do something based on the responses by the customer. That information would allow for different responses, emails to go to different people. That all depends though on the information and the selection in the select field, in this case, a radio select field. So let's go along and have a look and see how we set that up in Fluent Forms. We're now gonna make a form based loosely on the diagram we saw earlier. Users can make a choice based on their choice. We can initiate different confirmation messages and we can also send email responses to different people within an organization. So in order to do that, let's create a new form. In this case, we'll add a new form. We'll go for the standard basic contact form. In this case, because we want to elicit a response from the user, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at creating a mandatory first name and a mandatory last name field and we will disable the mandatory requirement for the message field. We'll now add the choices for the user. In this case we're going to use the radio field. We can either add it by clicking on the add button there, scrolling down to the radio field, or we could go to input fields over here and drag and drop, or just by clicking on the radio field it adds it at the bottom. So let's go back and edit our radio field. Here we go, onto the radio field, and let's change that to make selection. User can now make a selection, and let's call it choice one, choice two, choice three, and choice four. Let's leave it at four choices and let's make that a required field. We're happy with that, so let's save our form. There we have it, our form is ready to go. What we can do now is go back to setting and integrations and let's have a look and see the options that we have. So the first option that we have is form settings and this is the standard response message to anybody filling in the form, not based on any specific selection choices. So the first thing is we can keep them on the same page, which is what we'll do. Uh, we could redirect to a page or to a custom URL, but in this case, we'll, for the standard response, we'll keep it on the same page. And after form submission, we'll hide the form so they don't see the form again. We only want them to fill it in once. Here we can say, thank you for your message. We will get in touch with you shortly. So a pretty standard message but one that we can customize and we'll do that on one of our selection choices. So pretty standard response to anybody filling in the form. We can then move on to other confirmations first, which is very similar to form settings. We add the confirmation and you'll see that once again, we can create a message for the user that will appear on screen. So let's call this choice one and choice two, for example. We can now come along and say, keep it on the same page and we will say, thank you for your message. Um, we'll get in touch with you shortly, but let's make this a little bit more personal. Because they've taken the time to fill in the form, let's go dear, and then let's select their first name from the form and let's add regarding and let's include a choice from the choice that they made. In this case, make selection. Now it will say, dear first name, thank you for your message. We'll get in touch with you shortly regarding and what they were interested in. In order to make that possible, we'll say 
send this notification if any of the following match. In this case, we will say then make selection is equal to choice one. We'll add another one and say make selection equal to choice two. So now when they fill in the form on the screen, they will get this notification. We can also extend that to email notifications. Now, most forms will have a general uh, email that will go to somebody within the company whose responsibility it is, is to follow up on the emails that come in and redirect them according to what's in the email. In this case, we can create those redirections based on the information that's included in those forms. In this case, let's call it, um, instead of admin notification email, let's call it choice one and choice two. Yeah, we can enter an email, select a field, send to an email. The email to send to could be the, in this case, the admin email of the website, or you can specify a specific email for a specific person. What we'll do is we'll, we'll see how this is, is, is going to affect who receives this email later. Then we have a look at the subject. The subject, we can make it a little bit more interesting by including the selection. So what we can do now is we can go, uh, let's keep um, new form submission. Let's go input name. We don't need the square bracket. And here we can indicate the input. So when this form arrives, we'll know who it's from and what the information relates to. Here we'll have all the data from the form and here we'll have the URL of the page from which it was submitted. We can also now choose from the advanced offering to make it even more interesting. And the from name would be, say, from the company. So it could be um, company A. The from email address, in this case, we could make it from the person sending the email or we could make it from somebody in the company, uh, a standard from email address. In this case, we could just say make it from the admin email and the reply to email address, which is important because this is the email that the reply will go to. And here we would like the email address from the form. So if I reply to this form on receiving it, it will go straight back to the recipient standard BCC and CC options. And over here in the conditional logic is where we can have the form do something based on the user's choice. So in this case, we could say if any um, email is equal to, uh, let's not make, let's say if make selection is equal to choice one, Add another one, say make selection, and say equal, and in this case, choice two. So if they choose choice one or two, it's going to send the email to a specific person. And this is where we come in to change the email address. So this we might change to marketing at, and now when they complete the form, it's going to go to that email address. Similarly, we could make changes here so that if selection three or four, choice three or four is chosen, it goes to somebody else. Once we're happy with that, we can save the notification. So now we've set up a generic response. We've set up an email notification and we've also set up other confirmations based on their choice. We're not going to look at any custom CSS or JavaScript, and we have no marketing or CRM integrations. Let's go back now and test the form and see how that works. So here we are back at the uh, preview screen. This is where we can also change the styling, but we're not gonna focus on that. Right now, all we're going to do is test the form. So we fill in our details and in this case, let's make it choice number one. We submit the form and dear Bruce, thank you for your message. We'll get in touch with you shortly regarding choice one, which is exactly what we wanted. We can now go back to edit fields. 
let's go back to preview and design and let's have a look at it not using choice one or two but using choice number three which was a generic choice when we hit submit form now you'll see that we get the generic message so that's a very small window into what's possible using conditional logic to do something with the form once the form is submitted i hope you enjoyed that thank you for watching